Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to install some lighting and coin door mods to a Tron RK1 of cabinet. Let's get it started. This video is broken down into chapters as you can see here. Up first is modifying the riser. Here I'm modifying the RP panels that will make room for the floor to go inside of the riser. I have a full length tutorial on my YouTube channel for when I modify my Miss Pac-Man cabinet. Both RP panels are now modified and an inch and a quarter has been taken off the bottom of each. This will now allow room for the floor to be installed. We're going to reassemble the riser in its entirety, flip it over, and then we can put the floor inside. Now we're dropping the floor into the riser. Lines on the floor itself are indicating where the LEDs will go, and the T-nuts are also installed into the floor. We're drilling four pilot holes and then installing number eight two-inch long screws. The original feet that came with the cabin are no longer needed, so they're being removed with a pair of pliers. Now I'm installing the LEDs to the floor. Nothing special here, just following the guide marks I've previously outlined on the floor itself, ensuring they're 3 eighths of an inch from the edge of the riser. Now I'm installing the LEDs to the back panels. There are two panels for this Tron cabinet, so I created jumpers that allow the two panels to remain separate so that you can still disassemble them easily if you need to get inside of the cabinet. You also notice I've created a large port where the power cable usually is routed so that I can get other cables in and out of the cabinet much easier. Now the back panels are going onto the cab, power and LED control being routed through the port, screws being installed, and jumpers connecting the LEDs from the top panel to the bottom panel. Let's move on to the second mod for this Tron cab, which is the coin door. This is an example of a standard dual entry coin door I've used in other applications within my arcade. These are pretty nice, readily available doors that you can get pretty much anywhere online. What's nice about them is that they come with pre-wired LEDs to light the coin door reject buttons. And these are normally associated with a USB port, which make them very easy for install. These doors come with brackets on the inside of them that allow you to bolt them onto the cabinet itself. However, those brackets are required to have a minimum half inch or even five eighths of an inch thick material to bolt onto. They're actually intended for three quarter inch material, which is the standard thickness of any arcade cabinet. If you try to bolt these onto a standard kick plate panel on an RK one up cabinet, it will not work without some additional modifications. Okay, so here's a different style door I decided to go with for my Tron cab. This is more of a horizontal style door. Um, the actual internal mechanics are no different um, than the previous door that I showed. Um, however, the primary difference here is the bells and whistles, right? So this one gives you standard uh, bulb style uh, lighting effect for your reject buttons. There's no wiring. There's no USB port for those. Um, so you're kind of on your own to figure out how you're going to get that wired up, for, which for me wasn't that big of a deal, but just be aware it's not as convenient. Um, the second thing is, is these use four bolts that you put into the cabinet itself rather than actually using brackets. So this style of door does not care how thick your material is. As long as you use the bolts, you can connect it through the kick plate of an RK 1UP or you can connect it through a 3 quarter inch panel on an RK cabinet. Either way you spin it, uh, this one is a little more versatile when you think about installation. Okay, so on for the reject buttons. Uh, these doors and most doors come stock with red buttons. Uh, we're going to replace these with blue. This goes with the theme of the cab. And we're going to use uh, white LEDs for the light source at the top. So this is going to work out nicely. Okay, so now we're going to remove the four bolts uh, on each of the coin door reject buttons so that we can release them. Um, and then we're going to replace them again with the blue ones. 
These did come stock with yellow restrictor gates. I'm um, not quite sure why yellow restrictor gates were in with red reject buttons, but nonetheless, uh, we're going to take those yellow restriction gates out. Mind you, I don't do that here at this point in the video, but later during the mod, I do take them out. Um, and we're going to put back in the four bolts. So it's pretty straightforward to do this. And the process is the same on both uh, of the actual coin slots. Okay, so I have wired a USB port up to the uh, stock uh, bulb housings that came with this door. Again, they came with no wiring. So I took a USB cable and soldered that up and uh, have installed the LEDs to those. So basically these two LEDs will both be running off a of five volt supply. Okay, so moving on to the eye panel modification, uh, AKA the kick plate. Uh, what you'll notice, I've outlined uh, where the top P panel is inside of the cabinet, as well as the G panel, the floor of the cabinet. We need to ensure that the coin door fits snugly in between these. In this case, we're actually going to use the top P panel um, as the roof um, of the coin door itself so that we can use that bolt um, to go through the P panel uh, to make this for a cleaner installation. Okay, here's a simple template that I made out of cardboard that's basically the outline of the coin door uh, in regards to how it's assembled. This uh, helps me center it uh, both horizontally and vertically, uh, but also ensure that it's uh, far enough off the floor that I can fit a couple of small trays underneath the uh, coin doors themselves to catch quarters uh, when they're inserted. Okay, so now we're on to actually cutting out the hole inside of the eye panel. Uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, going by the guide marks created to uh, fit the coin door that we're going to install here. Okay, so here's our cab fully reassembled with the modified eye panel in place. And now we're installing the coin door. Once in place, we're going to use a drill to drill four holes, one on each side of the coin door that will allow us to use carriage bolts to attach it to the cabinet itself. I use standard black carriage bolts you can find at pretty much any hardware store and match the patina of the door itself. And inside of the cab, I'm basically just using a set of nuts and washers to make sure that they're secure to the cab itself. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the wiring. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to take apart the control deck. This has seven screws. They're quite easy to get to actually on this cab. And thankfully, I can say that taking the cover off of this uh, control deck came off without any trouble, no glue, etc. Okay, so once the uh, control deck cover was off, not a whole lot going on here. Um, no glue all over the place. Uh, so pretty straightforward, right? So we're taking the player one, player two buttons and wiring them uh, to the uh, actual uh, coin doors and the encoders according to the diagram I have on the lower right corner. This is very similar to what I did with my NBA Jam cab. The only delta here is that we're dealing with a two player cab here rather than a four player, but the fundamentals are pretty much the same. So this configuration requires that you put a quarter in either the player one, player two uh, coin slots to start a game. If you press the player one or player two buttons, that will not, uh, that will not work. Um, however, in order to, to use the return to main menu function of the software, um, I've wired the player one, player two buttons in series so that you hold and press both of them for five seconds and that will register you a return to the main menu. Okay, so here are a couple of examples of the wires that I created to connect the coin doors to the control deck. I made these uh, short in length uh, so you can connect them to the coin doors, but also disconnect them easily from the control deck, you know, in, in case the control deck itself needs to be removed. It's much easier than trying to re, you know, disconnect them from the coin doors every single time. Um, not, no rocket science here, just simple spade connections um, with uh, appropriate labels. So in order to do this, I, I highly recommend that you invest in a crimping tool and uh, set 
you know, you can get these readily available online. Amazon, for example, has a nice set of these. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description down below uh, that will include the tool itself, plus all of the crimping components, uh, spade connectors, etc. And it also includes all the insulators as well. So pretty much any any job you're going to face uh, working on your arcade cabinets uh, will be solved by using this uh, kit here. So I, I highly recommend it. It's made my, uh, my mod so much easier. Okay, so here's a snapshot of how I'm wiring the control deck to the coin door. Um, in this particular case, the Tron Arcade already has a pre... Uh, pre-built uh, wiring cavity in the control deck to route things outside of the cabinet. So I'm leveraging that. These wires are quite small in nature, uh, so it wasn't that big of a deal to add a couple of extra wires exiting uh, that cavity in the back of the control deck to get to the coin door. Okay, so now we're making the connections to the coin door. Uh, these are not polarity sensitive. So no worries with that. Uh, it is important, of course, that you hit the normally open uh, connection on these micro switches so that when you drop a quarter into the slot, it will actually close that switch and register a credit back to the encoder. Otherwise, if you get it wrong, you can always swap it out, no concerns. Um, to make things a little bit easier for future situations, I've made quick disconnects between the cabinet and the coin doors themselves, which you can see here. That way you don't have to mess with the coin doors. You don't have to mess with the control deck. If you need to take the control deck out, you simply do these quick disconnects and then the control deck will come out with really no issue. Okay, so now we're installing a Bally Midway uh, plate in here. I had to cut this down to size. This was not made specifically for this coin door. It's actually made for a larger insert, um, but I cut it down. It's very thin aluminum, so it cut pretty easily. Okay, so we've got Tron booted up, and you'll notice that the... Player 1, Player 2 buttons don't serve a function on the main menu. We use the trigger on the flight stick to enter the game. Then once in the game, we can put a quarter in. And that starts your game. Okay, so here's a few pictures of the finished product. If you like what you saw, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.